I've been really looking forward to this one. This is the Samsung Galaxy S 23 Ultra because after having the Note 20 Ultra since well it came out I'm finally upgrading. I'm still excited even though it's like pretty much the same phone uh, probably because I just love wasting money. Oh, would you look at that? That is such a stylish little box. But let's, but let's be honest, you don't care about the box. Oh, 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 oh there it is. Or at least only the uh, the cameras. <laughs> there it is. There it is. And honestly, first thoughts, it doesn't feel too different. It feels heavier. It certainly feels much heavier. Apart from that, it doesn't actually feel too much different to my Note 20 Ultra. In terms of stuff like the screen size and everything, it is actually pretty identical. One thing it has definitely changed, however, is the color. Because for whatever reason, Samsung no longer make the phones in like rose gold or whatever you want to call it. I like to call it copper just because it makes me feel more manly whilst having a golden phone. But they didn't have a golden option this time. Instead, you only have cream, green, black and lavender, which is what I went with. Which even for my taste, that is a uh, a bit much, but it is actually a really nice color, I gotta say. I almost expected it to be worse, but that is still very tolerable as far as colors go. Though, of course, the other big issue is that now my watch and my earbuds no longer match my phone. First world problems, I know, but at the same time, when you're buying a phone for this much, that's the kind of details you'd expect Samsung to care about, but whatever. Time to peel back the goodness. For the duration of video, I'm going to challenge myself and only use the S Pen. Mainly because I have to do some B-roll shots later and I don't want to get the screen dirty. Okay, let's just quickly go through the options here. Let's uh, select United Kingdom because that's where I live, unfortunately. So while that's setting up, let's see what else is in the box, which knowing the phone industry in the year 2023 isn't much. So you get like no charger, no nothing inside. You do however get the uh, SIM key, quick start guide, documentation, documentation, and even a cable. One massive improvement I'm super happy about is the fact you can now have 120 hertz at the highest resolution on this thing, which was so annoying that you couldn't have both on the uh, Note 20 Ultra. However, for some reason, it actually defaults to 1080. That's actually what kind of interesting. I wonder how many people actually missed that option and are now just running their phone at 1080p instead of 1440p. Now, it's, it's probably quite a few, let's be honest. So this is interesting. I actually went to like searching up on YouTube and it's like defaulting me to writing. So like I have to like write here the stuff I want to do. And seeing how my handwriting is kind of terrible, yeah, it's never gonna work out. Can I just like please use my keyboard while having the S Pen now? There we go. Oh, I have even have like transparency options for it. That's actually pretty cool. And why is it so small? And like, what can I say? This just looks stunning. What else can you expect from a company that makes such good displays like Samsung? So. Honestly, I had no qualms about the display being fantastic. Like, I know it's probably hard to tell, but trust me, it does look fantastic. Now then, the camera. Something that Samsung always spends a lot of time talking about, and when they announced this thing, it was no different. It was just the camera, 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 almost nothing but the camera, and for good reason. The primary lens at the back is a whopping 200 megapixels, and alongside some other major improvements, should mean that this is pretty much like the best camera you can have on a phone right now. Issue is I have like nothing uh, interesting to shoot here, so uh, there, I'll just take some nice photos and judge for yourself. What I can actually judge here right now is the uh, selfie camera. Like, what on earth do I even do? I've never even taken a selfie in my life. Uh, so, uh, is this a good angle for me? I always have a problem with my lips being like very vivid in photos and like whatever kind of filter or post-processing that they're doing here <laughs> definitely isn't helping with that. I gotta say, it does make my skin look so much better than it actually is. Okay, so here's the two of the phones right now, just kind of looking up, hello, hi, how are you? You can actually see quite a difference even in just this very kind of basic shot. So this is both from the front-facing camera. So yeah, for photo and video, there has been some massive, massive improvements. There is, of course, one more thing that Samsung really spent a long time talking about in the presentation, and that is image stabilization. I mean, they even got some, like, semi-known directors on to, like, talk about how they can totally shoot films with a Samsung S23 now, because... That's what like normal people do apparently. So let's see exactly how good it is. So one thing to note here, this is with the image stabilization on. As you can see, it's not too bad, but it adds so much noise to the image. It also limits us to only 1440p recording, which is kind of interesting. But then here is just the 8K 
not stabilized image or like you know with less stabilization and it still looks absolutely fine the noise is gone the details are still pretty much here i mean it's looking pretty fantastic so far at least in the preview i mean um, yeah, you win some, you lose some, the stabilization may be better, but that amount of noise, even like a well-lit room, was was a bit too much. But I mean, like, what else can I say? It's just another generational improvement in this late stage of the smartphone race. It is very much an improvement, and some of these features are absolutely fantastic. And keep in mind, this is like a three-generation old phone at this point, so naturally, those improvements are going to add up. But if you want to help me financially recover from this, then maybe check out our Patreon, because even a single dollar a month truly goes a long way, while you get awesome perks as well. I'd also like to thank my existing patrons, Gavin Burns, Ryan, Oki B, Justin Rage, Ella Vronyak, Balaj Roker, Meg Sumner, Shane Allcroft, Lensby, Jesse Hubman, and Sean Odgan. Down here, you can find our merch store, our Discord server, and our social media links as well. But anyway, that's about it, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember, subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.